Hello, thanks for joining us today on the American Wood Shop. I'm Scott Phillips and this is our project. Take a look at this. It's a unique table. It's a great workstation for woodworking if you beef it up. It has a gate leg that makes it very easy to stow. So this is our project today and no table saw. So stay around to see some great woodworking tips. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. If you want to build the perfect table without a table saw, this is your show. And this is that table. Now, I love the design of this because it's got a gate leg that swings out on a hinge to open this up to a large work surface. Now the one we're going to make today is out of hard maple and to understand a piece of furniture sometimes you have to really dig into it, flip it over and you can see all the particulars of how this is built. We need the two ends, okay, and those need to be 33 inches long. We need the tabletop, the gate legs and these stretchers and we'll put it all together with heavy duty construction pocket screws for inch and a half thick stock. And the other thing, this is air dried wood that you saw us band mill here at the American Wood Shop two years ago. Let's check the moisture content and it's right at 8% on a fresh cut, which means this wood is stable and ready to build with. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this track saw all set up so that we can mill down not only the cross cuts across the grain by using this track, and I've got a mark here, working this down just to cut these heavy maple work pieces that are over an inch and a half thick into manageable lengths. Once I use the track saw to do this, and I always read, understand, and follow the instructions that come with all the tools and products you use in your wood shop, and you should too, safety glasses, hearing protection, does collection and we won't use a table saw for any of this. I have this set up for a plunge cut. Let's make a cut. Bring it up. Now that's all the way through. Before I raise it up, it's to a complete stop. That's good. And look, with the built-in dust collection, and that's a dream. And the other thing I want you to see is that that is a tear-free cut, both on the top and on the bottom. Beats the heck out of a table saw for cross-cut work. Now, to line this up for rip cuts, that's a simple matter of using a sacrificial piece of insulation board where the blade is set up so that when it plunges down, past the edge here, it just barely nips into the sacrificial insulation board down below and that prevents tear out on the bottom side as well. So now I'll just rip this down and this has a friction strip here, two of them, that really grip to the wood so I need to put a straight edge along this edge getting the best yield and I absolutely love the dust extractor on this with a 0.3 micron HEPA filter. And I'll line this up and I'll make this rip cut. You can clamp it, but as long as you have good support here, those friction strips hold it in place. Make this rip cut. Now 
come all the way through. Let that come to a stop. Now that's an easy way to make the rip cut on my rough edge work pieces. And I just use the track saw with the track and I position it so I'm cutting parallel edges, running the length of the board with this track system. And it's easy enough to do, make sure the board does not move during the cut. Rough on boards naturally hold fast to the substrate, in this case the insulation board. And once I have it all ripped down to good widths, I use a unique way to use the track saw with a multi-function table to cut it to the right length. Okay, you know how to rip parallel edges now. You just lay a mark over one end, the other end, and then put the track down to it, rip it down. You just saw that. But to do the cross cuts, once these edges are parallel, I have my layout line here at 44 inches, and this track is on a pivot that's locked in place. And this track over here can be adjusted so that up or down to whatever the thickness is, the track rests in and is supported by this other side and it's locked in place. And it has a stop that's locked as well. And this fence is on a miter so you could do mitered angles but it's square to the fence now. I bring up the track saw and I put the hose and the cord over this black guide right here that helps to control both as you make that cut and I want to make sure that this is absolutely perfect. Slide that over to my line. Again, this fence is square to the track. Now I just make the plunge cut. This is designed to go into the MDF of this multi-function table. Only five millimeters. Let's make the cut. Now I'm all the way through, let it come to a complete stop, and look, a perfect cross cut every time. It has to be square, and that eliminates any burning that you might have cutting it any other way. So now I'll make a series of cross cuts to the finished length that I need for all the pieces to the table, and that way everything's cut precisely to the length. From there it's over to the bandsaw to cut out four curved cuts. Once I have my work pieces all milled to the finished length, in this case, the ends of the legs need to be 10 inches wide, inch and a quarter thick, and 33 inches long. And I just used an ellipse to lay out the curve with inch and a half feet. So I'll cut two of those out while I'm at the bandsaw. So there are the legs for the ends, beautifully sculpted with that curve. You know how to do that with a half inch blade from the bandsaw. This is called a bow jig. Be careful, this could be an arrow off of this white oak piece that's a quarter inch thick. And I use that along 33 inches on one side of this gate leg to lay in a curve to this 11 inch point right there. And I was able to stagger this. By the way, this is called ambrosia maple, not hard maple for the gate legs. A little bit lighter. That's an inch and a quarter thick, five quarter. And what I'll do now is cut this out, making sure that on each end of the gate leg, I have a two inch square area right there. So I'll sculpt this out into two pieces first, then cut the square on the bottom, and then cut the curve in. Whenever you see ambrosia, beetle marks like that, that's always in soft maple, not hard. The rest of this project is hard maple. So, dust collector on, because the band's all dusty, sculpt it free, and then cut to the line. Every 
Western Wood Shop has a secret weapon. Mine is this three horsepower, 15 inch planer with heavy duty dust collector in the back on remote. Earlier I planed down the boards that we've been working with. Time to plane these down. I've reconfigured the multi-function table. I've taken the fence and the rail off and put those away. And now what I'm using it for is assembly. And as I butt these boards bottom up together, straight from the planer, I've got a little bit of twisting going on here, but it's all good. I've laid in marks seven inches in from the ends of these square cut boards. And these were all square cut on the multi-function table, rip cut with the track saw. And now what I'm doing, as I butt these edges together, best faces down right now, is I'm taking these heavy duty brass hinges, bringing them up to that mark seven inches in, putting the barrel of the hinge, that's the center of the shaft that it pivots on, right on the middle of the seam, making sure it's flush on the end, and it is, and tight in the middle. And I use a VIX bit, to drill that pilot hole for these brass screws. And it's really important to wax a brass screw. If you don't, it could twist right off in this hard maple. And I will drive this in ever so carefully and draw it tight. And I will fasten all four butt hinges in place this way, keeping the barrel on the center of the seam and just take your time. Don't break those screws, whatever you do. Do this for all the four hinges. If any of the screws are a little bit stubborn, Drive them by hand. You don't want to risk breaking those heads off. And here you can see the bottom of the assembly right here. And that's the table top. And I'll slide that off the assembly table because we're going to need this to draw the rest of the parts together. And I'm going to just jump right into it here using a half inch diameter step drill bit and this pocket hole jig. And it's clamped into position and the work piece is carefully clamped to the quick bench and don't even think in hard maple of trying to do this in a forceful pass. You have to evacuate the chips. It is dense stuff. And what I'm doing right now is creating the pockets on center to take heavy duty screws to draw it all tight. Now there's a trick to this. This stop collar has to be adjusted so the pocket, when you drive the heavy duty screws from the brace piece that connects the leg assemblies, it doesn't drill all the way through the other side. So this is when it's adjusted for inch and a half material. This is when it's adjusted for inch and a quarter. It doesn't go in as deep. So this has been stopped, the collar's been stopped. I'll flip this around and on this three and a half inch wide, inch and a half thick workpiece that's 33 inches long, I'll go ahead and drill all the pockets with this jig. Great tool. I have a five inch wide stretcher and for that one I had to put a larger locking clamp onto this jig and I've clamped the workpiece down to the quick bench. Now I'll line everything up so 
that bushing is in the middle of the edge of this board. That's an inch and a half thick. The reason I'm putting it on the edge like this is so you really won't be seeing the cavities that hold this apron together, basically the legs. Now I'll just drill this out and you can see it's secured with a clamp down here. Again, taking my time. And once this is drilled, it's on to assembling the legs. I'm using 80 grit on an oscillating spindle sander to smooth that round cut off for the leg. A little bit more sanding to be done later on that. But for right now, I've done the same thing on this leg. And I'll release this clamp and you can see the inside is a little bit rough in places. It won't be seen. That's best grain right there. So I'm using these clamps on the multifunction table to hold this vertically. Those two are locked in. This pushes forward and then toggles tight. And now what I can do is with a center point and the pockets drilled on both ends, I can butt this up on center of the inside of the leg and then I'm going to clamp it on the far end here. And that just toggles into the assembly table or the multifunction table. And now what I can do is very carefully use a piloted drill bit that's 3 16 of an inch in diameter and create an interface to this board. And I bring that out. I don't go very deep. And then I carefully drive this heavy duty pocket screw all the way until I have to dial that clutch up so it will drive it home keeping it on center and that's nice and tight. Okay, now what I can do is reconfigure it, do the same on the far end, and that way I can draw everything nice and tight. So just get that done. Okay, rough edge in. Once I have the two screws in, one in each leg, I can flip this so it's standing and make sure this apron board or stretcher is square to this workpiece right here. And once it is, I can drill another pilot hole here, being careful not to go all the way through. Heavy duty screw that's not threaded on this shank part. So this will pull this to the leg workpiece. And I'll drive that nice and tight. And I'll cinch that home by taking the driver out, putting it into this handle, and now I can hand tighten it. Okay, and draw it nice and tight. Now once that's done, let's flip it back up on the assembly table, and I'll line up the other work piece that we have to have, and I'll take a second. I have the first stretcher secured now to the two leg work pieces, each end, and I'm bringing this up to my index marks and I'm tapping it into position to my marks. Lining everything up to keep it square, just like that. And everything has been drilled as before and I'll just draw these heavy duty screws Two on each end, total of four in this stretcher, nice and tight. Remember to wax the threads ever so slightly to make sure in this hard maple you get a good tight purchase just like that. And so I'll do the other end, making sure it's all lined up. And then I'll show you the small 3 8 inch pockets that we have to drill. Man, that hard maple is tough to drill. Be sure to use sharp bits. Now, what I'm doing is using a 3 8 inch diameter bit now with a different clamp pocket hole jig. And on the inside of the legs on the top,
what I'm doing right now is creating the 3 8 pockets that will fasten this assembly to the bottom of the table. And I did that in all four locations of the legs. And I wanted to show you one other thing. See that glide right there? Well, I need glides on the bottom of the feet of the leg assembly and also on the butterflies of the gate leg right here. And those are pre-drilled and just tapped into position. And so that's good. Now what I'll do is get the tabletop up on here and we'll fasten everything together. The bottom of the table is pointing up so that I can join the leg assembly and to the bottom of the table, I just bring it over to the witness marks. I'm using fine threaded pocket hole screws here and I'll draw those nice and tight in all eight pocket holes and notice how the wood is positioned clear of the hinge. It wouldn't be flat otherwise. This would butt on top. That'd be bad. So that's the spacing right there. And also the grain of this board that's running this way and the grain of this board that's running this way, the grains will expand and contract together. So this will be stable in time. Now I'll secure this and then onto the gate legs. Here you can see everything screwed together nicely with the exception of the gate leg. And why is it a gate leg? Well, this is hinged just like a gate. And I use the VIX bit to pre-drill the pilot holes to position everything properly. And the key thing is to keep this square in the axis to the legs and also to the front of the table. So I'll draw that tight. And I've positioned this so that it supports the drop leaf when it's swung to the up position. And yet this will swing shut so you can drop the leaf down. And that's kind of why they call it the butterfly table as well. So these already have wax on it. I'll draw it tight on this side and do the same on the other side. And that's how the gate leg works right there. I'm using two very powerful sanders. This Rotex has a smaller head, so it's super aggressive. I no longer use belt sanders. This is my tool to go to right there. And then this six inch random orbital sander, oh my word, you talk about changing my life. The number three on top means the circles in random orbital action are three millimeters, nice and tight. And I have both these on dust extraction. I never sand without an N95 dust mask. Now I'll sand this down thoroughly, working through 100, 150, then 220. And then I tack it all off with a good tack cloth, get the residue off so the surface is clean. And with good finishing gloves on in a well-ventilated place, I use an all-cotton rag to wipe out cherry Danish oil on this work surface or table. I do that on the legs, then I flip it over, and we get ready to work on the top. OK, now on to the top. And I've rounded over the edges ever so lightly with a hand plane. I'll use number one for that. Or low angle block, your choice. And the cherry mellows in time. It soaks right into that hard maple. And when you're making work benches like this, you just can't beat hard maple. It's stable, it's hard, it's durable. And this is that extra work surface that I need in my wood shop because it's the right height for this, for the multifunction table, and without the glides on the bottom of the feet, well, it wouldn't be nearly as versatile. You can move it around very easily. And then when it comes time to store it, you just hinge the gate legs in, and away you go. Now, why cherry Danish oil? Well, cherry and thyme really mellows out to make it look like that pumpkin maple color. And I'm not kidding you. This is a bench or a table for the ages. Now, get rid of that rag safely outside, let it dry out. And there you have it, the gate leg workbench. An easy project to put together. 
And the cool thing is, this is made out of wood that was sawn right here at the wood shop. Well, that's it for this week from the American Wood Shop. Hope you had as much fun as we did. Hope to see you next week when we tackle bedsteads out of recycled wood. Stay well. See ya. Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For more information behind the scenes at the American Wood Shop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Oh, and away we'll go on New Year.